Okay, so this lesson is on dihybrid crosses. So when you would use a dihybrid cross is when you're trying to figure out more than one trait at a time. It is a basically larger Punnett square. I'm actually going to show you a way you can solve this with a dihybrid cross or even a different way. So here's what I mean. So this is going to be our key, big B black, and you can read the rest right here. But So what that means is if we're looking at, we're going to do with guinea pigs here, that's the example I've been using, is this guinea pig would be black and have long hair. And this would also have black long hair. So we're saying a, a guinea pig with black long hair got together with another guinea pig with black long hair. What are their chances of having kids that are black and long or black and short or white and long and white and short? So there's more possibilities. That's why we have a larger Punnett square. So the way we do a dihybrid Punnett square is we have to use FOIL. So I don't know if you've heard this or not, but it's a common math term. And F stands for first, O stands for outside, I stands for inside, and L stands for last. So I'll show you what I mean. When setting up our Punnett square, what we do is we put first, the F is first, so it means out of these two pairs, the first letter in the B's here is the big B, and the first letter over here is the big L. So you set it up like this, first. And then O stands for outside. So you pick the outside letter over here, and then you pick the outside letter over here, since it's the outside. And the I stands for inside, so now you look at your four letters, and you pick the two inside letters. Little B and big L, the two inside letters. And the L stands for last, so add the two pairs here, the two Bs, the little B is the last letter of the two and the little l is the last letter of the And the reason you do that is you're trying to account for all possibilities. And since this guinea pig has the exact same genotype, you would do the exact same thing over this side. So you'd have your b, big b and your l, and then your big b and little l. And by all means, fast forward through this, instead of listening to me say the exact same thing over and over again. So I'm going to set it up so it's exactly the same on both sides. Really, I should probably put these next to each other. That would just be easier to read. And then L for last, little b, little l. So setting up, I think, is probably the hardest part. Once you have it set up, then it's pretty much just like a normal Punnett square. Only instead of two letters, you're going to have four letters in each square. So you combine the letters here. So this would be big B and big B. And then also in the exact same square, you'd have big L and big L. So you know right now, at the very least, one out of 16 probability of having black long hair. And then you continue to do the same for every single one. So I said it's a much longer point square, so it'd be big B, big B for this one, and then it'd be big L, little L. And I said you continue the whole way. So I'm actually going to solve the whole thing just to make sure that you can check to see how it's going. But like I said, as always with the flip lesson, if you feel like you understand what I'm already talking about, then by all means, fast forward through this so you don't have to watch me fill out the entire Punnett square. And then next will be big B and little B. And big L and little L. So there are 16 squares. So unfortunately, this method does take a little bit longer, and that's what makes it a little bit more of a complex Punnett square. I'm actually going to pause it while I fill in the rest, and then you can just see the rest of the square. Okay, so here is the finished Punnett square. <clears throat> so you'll you'll see, hopefully, that I did it just um, just right. But now it's a matter of you know how to read it. So let's take a look. Why don't we do blue? So let's look for all the ones if I said that are black and long. So this would be black and long, black and long. I'm just actually gonna put a line through. It's just gonna be easier. Black and long, black and long. So you can go through and count all the ones that are black and long. So right now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine that are black and long. And then if I said how many of them are black and short, so I need to find a big B. There's a black and short one. There's a black and short one. And there's a black and short one. So there's three that are black and short. And let's look for ones that are white and long. So let's see, this would be white and long, white and long, 
white and long. So it's three of those out of 16. And then white and short would be just this one. So ratio-wise, 9 out of 16 would be black and long. 3 out of 16 would be um, black and short. 3 out of 16 would be long and white. And only 1 out of 16 would be white and short. So you could do it this way. It's a dihybrid point square. Or you can actually do it this way, too. So if I asked you how many were black and long, you can just do two different Punnett squares. And a lot of people find this way to be a lot easier. It's shorter for sure, it just involves some math. So you find three out of four here are black, three out of four here are long, so then you multiply them together. And you get nine out of 16 are black and long. So you could do either method, the dihybrid square, or just simply multiply them. The dihybrid square ends up being better when dealing with eye color, which I hope that you check out that video very soon. Um, but that's how to do multiple traits, dihybrid square, or multiply the two Punnett squares together. All right. Good luck solving these equations.